intimidating things about learning to oil paint is the mediums. By far, it's the mediums and the solvents. I've been oil painting for about 18 months now. Admittedly, I've only been using turpentine as a solvent, which is disgusting. And liquid is the only medium that I've been using because I just didn't want to think about it. I didn't want to have to delve into the world of solvents and mediums because it seemed too overwhelming and too complicated. So today I bought a test kit of mediums and solvents and I'm going to go through and test each one and just experiment. So I've got myself a blank board ready to go. I've got my mediums. I've actually got a new set of brushes as well that I'm going to test out and just get a feel for the different mediums and figure out which ones I like, which ones I might try and incorporate into my normal process. Now, I actually have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm literally just reading what's on the bottle and then testing them on a board. And I intend to do further research later on to really figure out and get down into the nitty gritty details. So yeah, this is by no means a comprehensive uh, test of all mediums and all the knowledge to do with them. But as a newbie to oil painting, I just wanted to give them a little test and I thought it might be useful to share with you guys. So take from it what you will. Okay, so first up we have the refined safflower oil, which I've been really excited to try. So on the bottle it says, safflower oil has little tendency to yellow and is often recommended for use with whites, blues, and all pale colors. Useful for hand milling of oil paints. Not planning on doing that anytime soon. Used even in small quantities, it adds a loose, slippery quality when added to oil colors. Slow drying. Care should be taken when used for underpainting as paint films used using rapid drying colors applied on top may potentially crack. The paint film will stay open and can be reworked for 24 hours. I actually really, really liked the refined safflower oil. I found the, the way that it felt as I applied it was really just like, oh yeah, that's good. That's really, really good. I think I really enjoyed the oiliness of it, which sounds really strange because normally like you don't want oily skin and you don't want oily food, but apparently you do want oily oil colors. I um, I really enjoyed the way it blended and the way that it felt under the brush. I'll definitely be using this one in the future. And next up we have the Galkid Light, which is probably my least favorite so far. Galkid Light thins oil colors, increases transparency and gloss and speeds drying. Thin layers will be touch dry in approximately 24 to 30 hours. Galkid Light will retain brush strokes. So it pretty much has all of the qualities that I want to avoid <laughs> when I'm painting. Uh, I don't really like transparencies. I don't really like retaining the brush strokes. I want it to be sort of as thick and opaque as possible, which is what I really enjoyed about the safflower oil in contrast. I think in future, I'll probably be using the Galkid Light for a base layer um, because when it is thin, it's good to just kind of use less paint and to get the base layer down without too much hassles. That's the only real purpose I can see that for in the future. I'm not sure um, if it's usable for other things that I haven't thought of yet, but I'm sure I'll do a bit of research and see what I can make use of with it. Next up, we have the Neo McGilp. I should have checked the pronunciation before I came back to use this again. I remember I had to look it up last time. Neo McGilp maintains the body of oil colors, increases transparency and flow, and imparts a smooth, silky feel. Neo McGilp dries at a moderate rate and remains workable for hours. Neo McGilp gives colors a satin gloss. Shake gently before use. Oh, good. <laughs> it's a good thing I read that before I... Uh, before I used it. So I actually really, really liked this medium. I liked it a lot more than I thought I would. I liked the way it felt under my brush. I liked the way it blended. I like how the colors look. Um, we'll see how it goes when it dries, but I enjoyed that um, much more than I thought I would. It did remind me of liquid a little bit, except I liked this more than liquid. Um, it didn't seem to go as kind of transparent I guess, even though I think they both increase transparency. So I think I'll definitely be experimenting with that more in future. Next up, we've got the refined linseed oil. Refined linseed oil is the palest of linseed oils. Good to know. Adding refined linseed oil to colors increases flow and slows drying times. Use sparingly or mix with an equal amount Gamsol to create a traditional slow drying painting medium. So I enjoyed 
the linseed oil quite a lot. Uh, I think I definitely prefer the kind of oilier mediums, if that's a way of categorizing them. I really enjoyed the way it felt under my brush. It was really easy to apply. I love that it kind of held its body and, and remained really opaque. I really enjoyed that and I thought it blended well. And I can definitely, definitely see myself using that in future. Next up, we have a strange one, cold wax medium, which was really, really interesting. I was a little unsure about how this would go in my style of painting. It's made from naturally white beeswax and gamsol. Cold wax makes oil colors thicker and more matte. It holds thick, expressive marks and allows artists to cut or scrape back into paint layers. Used thinly, it gives colors the beautiful translucent quality of encaustics. I'll have to look up what that means. So I enjoyed this way more than I thought I would. I don't really apply paint very thickly or texturally ever. I can't really picture myself using that, but I really enjoyed the way that it applied, even thinly. Um, it was difficult to spread. It definitely doesn't make it spread any further, but I liked the thickness of it. Um, and it, when I applied it using the palette knife, it definitely, it was very satisfying. So I might have to experiment a bit more with textures in my work. At the moment, that's not something that interests me hugely. I really love all the thin, very blended appearance in my work at the moment. And last up, we have the solvent free gel. Apparently, Solvent-free gel increases flow and transparency, has a moderately fast drying rate and increases gloss. Use in moderation with oil colors, no more than 25% by volume. So I found this one quite similar to the cold wax medium in terms of applying it thickly, but I did like the cold wax medium a bit better than this one. Um, I'm not a huge fan of the transparency. I really like the sort of opacity that some other mediums brought to the table. Um, but I did really enjoy the way this applied and I think I will have to experiment more with it in the future. So I was very excited to get the Gamsol because I've just been using turpentine as a solvent throughout my entire oil painting journey, which I've been oil painting for about 18 months. So, and I just grabbed the turpentine because, you know, I thought that was just the standard way to go. And it's also disgusting. So I'm really, really glad that I finally have the Gamsol. It is odorless, thank God, and it's a bit less toxic than um, turpentine. So it's it cleaned the brush super well. I was so happy with the way that it got paint off. And it's also great for mixing in with the paint as well and adding to the other mediums. So I'm very, very happy with this. I only bought a little test bottle to see how I went. I'm definitely gonna go out and buy a big container of it because I can see this completely replacing my need for turpentine. So very, very happy about that. And then of course my new brushes. I was so stoked to get a new set of brushes uh, for my birthday from my friend Sam. Thank you, Sam. And I also got a beautiful brush from my friend Kyle that is super lush and I'm very excited to start using that one as well. So far, they worked great. I'm not sure what kind of brushes they are. Let me read. So it says Roy Mac. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to do a bit of research and see what kind of brushes they are, but so far so good. I normally use extremely cheap brushes that uh, don't last me very long. So now that I have some better brushes. I'm hoping to take a bit better care of them and hope that they serve me well throughout my painting process. Okay, that wraps up my little test session of my new painting mediums and solvent and brushes. Very excited. I'm glad that I did test them out on here rather than just testing them straight on a painting because I think that could have been a little bit nerve wracking. I'm not sure how I'm really gonna introduce them. I'm very set in my ways in my painting process. So I think I'll have to experiment a little bit on the under layers of paintings <laughs> where I build up the courage and figure out how to use them to achieve the results that I'm after.